Jacob Goodnight is back, but is it worth it? Hell yeah it is. See No Evil 2 stars Glenn Jacobs, Daniel Harris, and is directed by the Sasuke sisters. Okay, slight spoiler alert here guys. If you haven't seen See No Evil 1, go ahead and turn this off, watch that movie, come back, and then watch this review. So when we last left uh, See No Evil 1, we saw Jacob Goodnight plummet to his quote unquote death out of a hotel window. And See No Evil 2 picks up directly after that, even though the movie itself was filmed eight years after the first movie. So in the beginning of See No Evil 2, we see Jacob Goodnight, along with all the bodies that he has racked up, being taken to the morgue, and this whole movie takes place inside the morgue. Daniel Harris plays Amy, she is one of the corners, and it's her birthday, and they throw her a birthday party. And during all this, Jacob Goodnight comes back to life, just like Jason Voorhees, and starts cleaning house inside the morgue. So guys, I got a lot of comments off of my first review for the first movie, and thank you for those. Just about everybody told me that you're gonna like the second one better, and they weren't wrong. I really enjoyed this movie actually much better than I did the first movie. First of all, from the opening shots, I love the cinematography of this. I love the way the Sasuke sisters directed it. It just seems like it is a better production overall. And also, the acting is better. A little better, but it's definitely better this time around. Most of that thanks goes to Daniel Harris for elevating the material. And I will get to Miss Harris in a minute. But first, I'm going to talk about Catherine Isabel. When I was watching this, she was pretty out there, pretty wild, pretty crazy. And you know who she reminded me a lot of? Harley Quinn. And I think she would have actually been a really good Harley Quinn had they not gone with Margot Robbie. I mean, if you look at this shot right here, tell me that isn't Harley Quinn. And the scene itself, she's actually making out with a corpse. Also, I really liked Glenn Jacobs in this, or Kane, much better than his portrayal in the first one. We already know his backstory, and there's quite a few flashbacks to the first movie, and I think that helped with this movie, just in case you kind of forgot what was going on in the last movie. They didn't overdo it either. Uh, I'll give you an example, like Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. What a ripoff. Uh, that movie, they pretty much played the whole first movie before they got things going. Just an abridged version of it. This one, they did it right. They just give you little bits here and there just to say, oh, by the way, if you don't remember, this happened in the first movie. I also like the mask that they used for Kane's character this time. He really has this uh, character fleshed out pretty well. And it's kind of interesting because it's been eight years since he played the character. So it's like he really studied up on what he wanted to do for this entry. And finally, I have to say I loved Daniel Harris in this movie. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of Daniel Harris. I love her in the Halloween movies. I like what Rob Zombie did with her, especially in the second movie. But I always wanted her to have that Laurie Strode, Ripley from Alien type moment where she finally had enough and she wanted to stand up for herself. And she does that in this movie. And that is really what elevated the movie for me. She is actually a really good actress. To me, she's kind of like the B-movie screen queen, if you will. But I do think she's a good enough actress to where she could handle A-type roles. Now, this movie definitely has some faults. The first, I'd say, 20 minutes of this movie, it is pretty bad, and it does get annoying pretty quick. Thankfully, there is a moment in the movie where it goes from bad to really good and really intense, and it never lets up until the end of the movie. So guys, overall, I would give Sino Evil 2 a purchase worthy. Now, does that mean I think this movie is just as good as, say, other movies that I've given a purchase worthy? No. This is a completely different genre. For a B-level slasher movie, I would definitely give it a purchase worthy. So guys, I want to know what you guys thought of See No Evil 2, if you have seen it. And what are some other B-level slasher movies that you would recommend? And I have to say thanks again to a new writer for recommending the See No Evil series to me. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and drum dumb out.